Cecilia is nine and she is strong-willed and independent and she is the big sister, the bossy big sister sometimes. <laughs> and she's also very sweet. And we learned in January about six months ago that she has Batten disease. Lily is seven and she is sweet and soft and kind. She's our gentle flower. She loves little things. And shortly after Cecilia's diagnosis, we suspected that she had Batten disease and we confirmed it shortly after. Dr. Matthias called me and I was at the park with all the kids and it was asking me like, how is Cecilia doing? Like, how's her speech? And how is she doing at school? And I was like, yeah, the same, like, why are you asking me this? So Cecilia at that point had been and still is stuck pretty much at a mid kindergarten level. Socially, cognitively. Academically, all like, the way around. Yeah. He said, well, we got genetic results back. And I said, well, you know, what is it? And it, it's, it's like he didn't want to tell me. He was really dragging his feet. And he finally just said, like, it's CLN3. And I was like, OK. And he got off the phone and said, Children's will call you. So I called John. I'm at the park getting the kids back in the car to go home for lunch. And I called him. And I'm driving. And I can't look anything up. And I just said, Dr. Matthias called and said, it's CLN3. And he immediately started looking it up. Uh, yeah, Dr. Google again, right? All he told me on the phone was, I'll just meet you at home. So I got home with the kids and I just, and I'm standing in our mudroom and I Google CLN3, a rare genetic neurodegenerative disorder that is ultimately fatal by late teens to early 20s. Like that's the first thing I read. And then it starts describing like blindness, seizures, loss of mobility. Loss of cognitive ability. Regression. Regression, feeding tubes, wheelchair, bedridden, fatal. Dementia-like like, symptoms, aggressive behavior. And we're like, we're like searching for the like, this is, there was the 5%, like in some cases this happens. Or and, only when untreated, right? Yeah, like no, no cure, no treatment, no, like nothing. There's nothing. Just palliative care. When I read that in the laundry room, I literally fell to the ground. I couldn't breathe. Thinking first like Cecilia and then realizing, oh, Lily has the exact same symptoms as Cecilia. Children's Hospital called probably within an hour. All the genetic counselor could say to us was, I am so sorry. There really is no treatment. There really is no cure. There's about this much research going on currently which feels like a lot when there was nothing yeah, to, five years ago. To give credit to Beyond Battens and to the Bensons in particular, 10 years ago, their daughter was diagnosed. And there was nothing. There was not even research. There, there, it's such a rare disease that it's hard to get funding. When we met with the genetic counselors, we were told that our girls were number five and six in the state of Colorado to have CLN3 Batten disease. There's about a thousand cases in the U.S., maybe 5,000 that they know of worldwide. Batten's disease is an autosomal recessive disease. So that means that we both have a defective gene. There's a one in four chance of our children getting that gene from both of us. Nora got both good genes. Ruthie and Zelly are both carriers. So they have one good and one bad. So they're just like us. Right. They're carriers. They're unaffected their children could have this disease. Cecilia doesn't seem to be too angry about being blind. She, she's scared. It's very hard, hard to understand her. You kind of have to decipher her language, but in her language, she says things like, when my eyes go dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will it, will I will be able hurt? to, yeah, will it hurt when my eyes go dark? When we found out that they were going to go blind when it wasn't Stargardt's and it was what they thought was rod cone dystrophy and we told them, we went out to dinner with just Cecilia and Lily and we told them like, you mm -hmm. know, we learned that you're gonna go totally blind. Just so you know, this is gonna happen. And they didn't really have a response at the restaurant but I remember Cecilia saying very clearly on the way home like, God didn't make me this way, mommy. Like, why am I gonna go blind? 
So our process of that. Yeah. But she's very spiritual. It's. Yeah, with as gre- as aggressive as she is, she's also very sweet. And um, she's very tuned in. She to... experiences things that we can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. I'm born and raised Catholic. And John came into the church four, four years, years ago. ago. We really feel like now, looking back, like that was totally strengthening us. A lot of people have told me, like, I don't know how you are so strong in your faith. I would just totally shut God out. It's like, I don't know how to do this without God, without our community, without our other faith. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm angry at God. I'm confused, but I don't know where else to go. Yeah. I mean, our, we are have such a community within our church. When we were looking to move, that was our deciding point. We cannot be further than 15 minutes from our church because that's where our people are. That's where our family is. We decided to move up their sacraments. So both Cecilia and Lily were received First Holy Communion and were confirmed in early June. And that was really beautiful. And Cecilia, she gets it and she is she is tuned in. She said, on the way home, it was just my mom and I and Cecilia and Lily. Should I share this? Mm-hmm. And um, we were asking them, like, how, how did it feel? What was it like? And Cecilia said, well, when you put the oil on me, it, I got so hot. And it was like, that's the Holy Spirit. Like, you are, yeah, you received the Holy Spirit. And then she said, when I, when I had Jesus' blood, it washed me on the inside. And that was so beautiful. And then she paused and she said, and now I can die. And my mom and I were just sobbing like, oh, she doesn't know that piece of this story, but she gets it like, in a way, she's okay with whatever happens. We're raising our kids to die. And we believe that when they do, when that happens, they're gonna go to heaven. So that's our job as their parents. I mean, for all of our kids, but specifically, we know we're not raising them to be a good mom or an engineer or a good member of society, like we're raising them to go see Jesus. 